Hi, Aaron here. And today we'll be talking about something near and dear to my heart. That's right, drama, the theater, the stage, acting. Now, is drama really useful for kids? Yes. Yes, and yes again. I use drama for younger groups as an excuse to develop kids' social emotional skills, to talk about things like empathy and friendship and perspective. My primary concern when teaching younger kids is comfort. If kids don't feel confident and comfortable while speaking, then it's hard to do a drama lesson, yeah? yeah. Hi everyone, it's me, Aaron, and I'm with my two friends. Hello. And? My name is Sierra. Yeah! So the first thing I start with in any drama lesson is an improvisation. So that means giving kids a general idea of what we're doing and letting them choose what they're going to say, let them choose their own vocabulary. So one of my favorite ones to do in a first class is say, we're baking a cake, or we're making a milkshake, or we're making ice cream, whatever, and we're stirring, raking dough, we're kneading, we're adding things in, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this, and asking kids to add a crazy ingredient. Say, what do you want to add to our cake? And they're like, hmm. All right, girls, first thing we have to do is make a cake. Okay, so first, mukha. Now take an egg and some sugar. Wait, we need milk too, yeah? Here's some milk here. Ready? All right, we stir, we stir, we stir. Now we need one special thing. All right, can you think of a special thing to put in there? No. Chocolate. Chocolate, all right, put in some chocolate. Yeah, yeah break it up. Ira, what are you going to put in? Chicken. Chicken? <laughs> okay, let's take a chicken. <laughs> Wait, we have a chicken somewhere, or a pigeon. It's a pigeon, put it in. <laughs> and we're just gonna put it in. <laughs> let's try it up again. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Oh, okay. Everyone take one bite, ready? Ah! Oh. And the Oscar goes to... Now, it's hard to start doing theater with kids at all, let alone in a foreign language. Performance poetry and tongue twisters are a great way to ease them in so they can kind of test the water. Now, I mean, this needs to be done in a way that is very theatrical, of course, and not the kind of reciting poetry where they're like... Svetla pushistoya, stiežnika belaya, kakaya čistoya, kakaya smelaya. They should be engaging and fun and loud and done in a big group. They're little kids for God's sake. So, tons and tons of resources are available online. I'm particularly fond of Shel Silverstein. I'm particularly fond of this guy whose name I can't say. Shel Silverstein. But the sky's the limit. Choose things that are appropriate for the theme you're doing in your English classes. Have kids speak loudly and chorally and together, all right? So here's one. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. How does your garden grow? with silver bells and little shells and pretty maids all in a row. So there's the rhyme itself. When I teach that, I like to give kids a character to do it. My favorite, my go-to, is always gonna be a witch. That's so fun. So you get the kids to say, Mary, Mary, quite contrary. How does your garden grow? With silver bells and little shells and pretty maids all in a row. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. And then you're gonna flick your hair out of your face. Say, how does your garden grow? How does how your, does your garden, garden grow? grow? How does your garden grow? Or give them another character. Say, um, you're a pirate, yeah? Mary, Mary, quite contrary. How does your garden grow? With silver bells and little shells and a pretty mate all in a row. The sky's the limit, yeah? The characterization is there to keep things interesting, to keep you engaged, to keep the kids engaged, and to give them ideas about inflection and how different people talk. After that, it's a good time to do something softer, something more contained. Your classes for younger kids can't be all high energy, all running, all acting, so this is a good time to bring kids in, to calm the energy down, sing a song, do a nursery rhyme, do a poem, 
She sells seashells by the seashore. Two tiny tigers take two taxis to town. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. So for a longer activity and for using more creativity and using kids' existing knowledge, I like to do a retelling of a fairy tale. So one of my favorites to go to is Little Red Riding Hood. So you start if you ask kids, what happens in Little Red Riding Hood first? And it's like, Little Red Riding Hood goes through the forest and finds the bread for her grandma. So you start and you have one kid be the grandma. You have one kid be Little Red Riding Hood. Or if you have a lot of kids, have a bunch of grandmas and a bunch of little red riding hood. Who cares? We know the story Krasnaya Shapuchka. Yes. Hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Oh, she's amazing. She's a star. And Grandma, can you say, bring me some bread? Bread bread. And can you say, okay, Grandma? Okay. Yes, we did it. All right. Now, Grandma, go to bed. <laughs> Hello, Little Red Riding Hood. And you say, hi, Mr. Wolf. Hi, Mr. Wolf. Where are you going? The fire bread. <laughs> Do you say it in English, Helen? <laughs> Who's there? I'm just going backwards. It's me, Little Red. Now with young, young kids, I'll choose a theme and find a book or sometimes a YouTube video to go along with it. Today, I've brought a book called Zog. Now, Zog is a book about dragons. Dragons growing up and learning how to fly, learning how to roar. There are tons of things you can pick out of a kid's book. For example, if you have really young kids who don't know a lot of English yet, we can do colors. We can do pink, orange, red, yellow. You know your colors. I don't know why I'm doing this with you. We can do verbs like fly. After you've read the book with your kids, you can have them act these things out as well, yeah? Using call and response vocabulary. Say, fly like a dragon. And they're just like, flying like dragons, right? You can go to the next one and say, roar like a dragon. And they go, roar. That's kind of the structure I like to do with my young, 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 young classes, yeah? Just talk about colors. Just have them walk around and say, I'm a dragon. Are you a big dragon or a little dragon? I'm a little dragon. Are you a yellow dragon, a blue dragon, a green dragon? I'm a pink dragon. Yes, amazing. Just get that kind of interaction, flying around, roaring, talking about what kind of dragon they are. Do they have horns? Do they have four wings? All kinds of creativity can be involved with this after you've chosen a book like this. Or you can read a book about the jungle like we've done. And if you have younger kids with a lower level of English, you can say, you're a monkey. Do you remember the monkey from the book? Can you climb a tree like a monkey? Or do you remember the fish? Let's swim like a fish and have kids act, have them move, swimming high and low in the ocean, talking to each other in their fish voices, or just making sounds. That's part of building confidence, yeah? If you want kids to talk to each other in English, step one is just making sounds, yeah? Ooh, ah! It's amazing, it's great, it's easy, it's fun, and it builds on each other. So, we have fly. Let's go fly, ready? No, chickens don't fly! Swim, swim, go, swim, 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 swim. Yes, yes, yes. What do monkeys do? Monkeys. What monkeys, do they do? Monkeys, they monkeys. climb. Let's climb like a monkey. Oh, yes, girls. Awesome. All right. Ah. Do you want some cake stickers? I give away stickers constantly in my classes to build confidence. If a kid says something particularly loudly or with good emotion or is just following rules, yeah? It's just, it builds confidence and it's just, it's so fun. On days that I walk in and kids aren't following rules or it's a full moon or I'm in a bad mood and my reaction is like, sit down, listen, blah, blah, blah. I take a step back and I'm like, no, 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 this is not how we teach. This is not how Mr. Aaron teaches. And I go and give a sticker. The kids were following rules, who were kids who were doing the right thing, kids were trying hard, and it changes my mood, it changes the kids' mood, and it runs just a positive classroom and the type of class that kids can learn in and thrive in. Kids, I mean, who doesn't like a sticker? To sum it up, don't be afraid of being silly and being loud in your theater classes. The important thing is to build fluency, to build comfort, and have kids speaking really easily with each other. A lot of teachers are hesitant to be loud and silly in front of their classes because they'll feel like kids won't respect them or that they'll lose control of their classes or they'll be seen like less of a teacher. And I want to encourage you, if you're trying these activities, to set aside time, say, this is drama class, this is drama time, this is time to be silly, and then come back to your normal teaching if you're doing this in an English class. So drama time is now, we're silly, we're crazy, we're running around, and then 
back to normal. So really set aside time and structure and create good limitations for you and your students in this time. By the way, if you want to read more about theatrical lessons in Russian, take a look at the Sky Teach blog. Today we have an article about it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sky Teach. Press the bell button so you never miss a chance to learn something new. Goodbye! See ya!